Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Keep It Pro training call brought to you by Networking Wisdom each and every Sunday at 4 p.m. Pacific for the past five and a half years. The purpose of this call is not only to learn skills for success in business and network marketing, but also... Thank you for joining. My name is Meredith, and I have the honor and privilege to introduce the creator and host, Mr. Ramacio Fulcher. Ramacio is a well-sought-after leader, trainer, and coach, as well as a very successful entrepreneur. At the age of 25 years young, he made his first millions in mortgage and real estate. Shortly after that, he was introduced to network marketing. Because he was the ideal student and learned from the best, he quickly rose to the top. In fact, he has been one of the top 50 MLM income earners in the entire world. He has 750,000 people in his network and has done over a billion dollars in sales. He knows how to make money and knows how to make money fast. He loves to have fun, but most of all, he loves to share the wisdom he has gained over the years. In fact, he has helped countless individuals make life-changing income all over the world. What I love most about Ramacio is his ability to know exactly what his audience needs to hear each and every time he speaks. I highly suggest that you find a quiet place and grab a pen and paper because you're going to want to take notes and remember these nuggets of wisdom he's going to share today. Without further ado, here is your millionaire mentor, your marketplace minister, the California kid, Mr. Ramacio Fulcher. Are you there, Ramacio? Absolutely. I am here. Can you hear me, Meredith? Loud and clear. All righty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for actually tolerating us all year long. We love you, we appreciate you, and we salute you for stepping up and being our gracious host week in and week out. Well, listen, guys, this is the last call, and I'm not talking about alcohol. This is the last call for 2020, 2021. This is the last call for 2021, guys. We're getting ready to cross over into 2022 and, boy, we have a special word just for you. Listen, for all of you that are, maybe this is your first time stopping by, we love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for coming on in. This is a free platform. We've been doing it for five and a half years religiously, guys. Same time, same number. Same time, same number. Do me a favor. Go ahead and bookmark this number for yourself. Maybe this is your first time joining us. Every single Sunday, 4 p.m. Pacific, 6 Central, 7 Eastern, and God knows whatever else time zone it is, wherever you're calling from. If you prefer, for some reason, if you miss the call, not to worry. These calls are always recorded. They're instantly uploaded to our, uh, to our website. They're uploaded to my Facebook page. They're also uploaded to our YouTube page. And guess what? We don't charge you anything. It's absolutely free. You can download it and listen to it, and we truly, truly hope Hope that it blesses you in a multitude of ways. Now, if you're wondering, what do we teach on this call for the last five and a half years? What we teach, guys, every single Sunday, one of two things. Number one, we, you'll find us Sunday in and Sunday out teaching you the specific skills that you need to get yourself to the very top of whatever it is you're promoting. You do realize that if you're an entrepreneur or plan on being an entrepreneur, you're going to have to promote a good or a service. You're going to have to promote something. So we teach you the specific skills that you need to get yourself to the top. Secondly, we also teach life skills. One of the things you're going to find on your entrepreneurial journey is that as you grow as a man or a woman, as you grow, everything else automatically grows around you. So what we have found is that life skills are just as important as specific skills. And we teach those every single Sunday absolutely free. There's no angles. There's no gimmies. There's no gotchas. We don't, you know, we don't check the call log and call you up two years later and try and sell you Kleenex. We don't do that. This call is absolutely free. Come one, come all. Now, there's one special request I have of you, one special request, and here it is. We would like you to subscribe to the philosophy that we do this call under. And that philosophy is we believe what we make happen for others, God will gladly make happen for us. 
If there's anything that you want to get, you want to get a complete understanding on, I don't care what you do, uh, what, who you are, where you're from, if you want to know how to go to the next level in your life, you've got to understand it's about giving. You've got to literally get that deep on the inside of you. I believe if you can harness that simple concept, I know you want to make more money. Did you know that making more money is all determined upon how much more giving you can do? Can you solve more problems for people? See, everything is based on John 3.16. God so loved the world that he what? He gave. And so what I want you to understand is that the philosophy that this call is about is really simple. We believe what we make happen for others, God will make it happen for you. He'll make it happen for us. And so I want each and every single one of you to know there's a purpose inside of you. You have something to offer the, offer the world, whether you know it or not. God did not make a mistake. And you ascending to the next level in your life is determined, is depending upon you giving. So listen, like my little cousin would tell me, he used to call me up and say, hey, Moss, you know, you told me you would be here at 2 o'clock. It's 2.30, man. I'm waiting on you. What's up, man? Where you at? And so I'm saying to you what my little cousin used to say to me. I'm waiting on you. I know that you want to go to the next level in your life. We're waiting on you. There's something inside of you. You are meant to solve a problem. There's a problem that I've got that I need you to solve, and can't nobody solve it but you. And likewise, there's a problem that you have that, believe it or not, jumping on this call, it helps solve that problem for you as well. We all matter. Play your role. If you play your role on the team, I promise you, we're going to all get the dream. So listen, let's go ahead and let's wrap up the series that we started some four weeks ago called Faith Talk. Uh, if you're just joining us for, for the first time, I want to encourage you, go to the website, YouTube, whatever, and download the last four editions. They have been absolutely spot on the money. I must say so myself, right? <laughs> they have been spot on the money. I mean, I'm talking about on the money. Did I, can I say it again? on the money. So I want to encourage you to go back and re-listen to those. I, pl I promise you it will do you good for sure. But today is the final edition, and uh, I've got two uh, powerhouse. I, I got the big guns on the call today. That's right, baby. I had, I had to knock on the door all day long. I got the big guns on the phone with me today. Oh, yeah. I'm feeling real good. The big dogs is here today. We got some guest speakers for you today that I know each and every single one of you are going to be just tremendously blessed by. So if you can, grab a pen, grab some paper, get ready, because I'm getting ready to get out their way and let these boys do what they do. But uh, I want to just tell you guys, listen, I know that between now and the first of the year, you're going to hear a lot of different people talk. You're going to hear pastors at church talk. You're going to talk to yourself. Your friends are going to talk. You know, you're going to hear a lot of conversation as we go into 2022, as we go into 2022. And then I, I believe you're going to hear a lot of good stuff. I really do believe. But I want to tell you, the most important conversation you could ever, ever utter is faith talk. And what does that simply mean? Look, I'm not going to do a recap of call number one that we did, but, but in short, what I want you to know is that we live by faith and not by sight. There is a fight going on between the spiritual realm and the natural realm. What does that mean? Each and every single one of us that are listening we all are waiting on something. Some of you are waiting on a, a, a bride. You're waiting on your wife. Some of you are waiting on your girlfriend or your boyfriend. Some of you are waiting on a pregnancy. Some of you are waiting on a, a promotion in the next job or business you're on. Some of you are waiting on the government told you they were going to send you a check. Everybody waiting on something. Some of you, everybody's waiting on something. We all are. And I want to really just draw your attention to while you're waiting, you see, there's a fight between the spiritual realm of promises that were made to all of us by God, and there's, a, and, and there's a reality of what you physically can see. You get that picture? There's a fight between the spiritual realm and the natural realm. In other words, the natural realm is what you can physically see right now. And many a times what we see is not the thing that we've been believing for. That's not all that we desire, right? And so there's a fight between the spirit realm and the natural realm. And I'm telling you, faith talk is the most important talk you could ever, ever utter. 
Listen, I want to encourage you from the bottom of my soul. Listen, I'm not a pastor. I'm not better than you. I'm not bigger than you. I'm just playing my role in the game. That's right. I have a role to play. You have a role to play. I'm doing me the best way I know how. And I know that what I have to say, as I also live it out, it's helping people. Just like when you step into your purpose, turn your light on, it's going to help some people too. Don't worry about how big or how small, whatever that thing God put inside you to do, don't worry about that. See, it's none of your business how your dreams are going to come to pass. That's God's business. But what is your business is you being obedient to the gift that was given to you, right? And I'm trying to tell you that once you first, first of all take hold of what your gift is, stop denying it, the next thing you're going to need while trying to birth that gift is faith talk. You're going to need to understand the importance of living by faith versus living by sight. It's not an easy fight. It's not an easy fight. And what I want to encourage you to do, go back, re-listen to the last four editions of what we've done, open up your word, grab a scripture two or three or four. Let me say that again. What did I say? Go back, re-listen to the last four editions that we've done, open your word. Uh Uh-oh, somebody said, what? What are you talking about? Open your Bible and grab yourself one or two or three or four scriptures And I want you to memorize those scriptures and recite. Do you understand you can get rich and wealthy off one scripture? One scripture, if you just recite that thing over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and and no matter, I'm talking about when you're doing bad, when you're doing good, when you're doing in the middle, doesn't matter. Just over and over, you just continue to just say that one. That's how powerful God's word is. You know, and you don't have to worry that, oh, you're not perfect, so therefore you won't be blessed. That's not true at all. We are all descendants of Abraham. So that guess what? There is a blessing with your name on it. That's right. There is a blessing with your name on it. And so what we want to do here is teach you how to draw down these blessings, how to make these blessings become reality versus just, you know, just talking and just, you know, saying a bunch of nothing. I want to show you that, but there is a waiting game. There's a waiting game. That's right. They say if you ever want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. And the reason why they say that is, see, God is omnipotent. He knows everything, right? He knows everything. And, see, God is concerned about the process and teaching us many, many lessons along the way. Now, you're going to get the blessing. It's got to happen. The moment you understand these principles and you begin to speak them into existence, over and over and over and over again. Listen, you're channeling from the heavens, from the spiritual realm, down into the natural realm. So it's got to happen. It's, what do you mean? If it's got to happen. But see, what happens is the enemy, while waiting, comes to discourage you. It comes to discourage you. It comes to make you feel like, where is your God? Where is that thing you've been praying for? As if it's not going to happen. And that's why I want to encourage you. Open your word, grab two, three, four scriptures, commit them to memory, and let those be like your first name. Well, I mean, let's commit them to memory just like you know your first name. Now, look, some of you hear me going, oh, this sounds wonderful. I'm not here to motivate you. That's not my purpose. I'm telling you something that I know you're going to need. I know you may be living well right now. All your bills is paid. Your health is right. Everything seems fine. Or I know you're at the top of your game right now, or you're in the valley. I'm telling you, none of us get out of this lifetime without trials and tribulations. And the way that you deal with these trials and tribulations is basically your testing ground. Hello. It's a test. See, for you to promote to the next level, guess what, baby boy? You've got to pass the test. There's a test. And I'm trying to tell you, faith talk is going to get you through the test. And so that's why I want to encourage you to go back and re-listen to the last four calls so that you can take away specific nuggets, I- ideally getting a scripture two or three, committing it to memory, and literally beginning to speak faith in every area of your life.
Put that faith talk on it, on your health. Put that faith talk on your finances. Put that faith talk on your relationship. Put that faith talk on that little boy. Put that faith talk on that, on that, on that bad child who's not where they need to be right now. Put that faith talk, you know, in your community. Put that faith talk in your dream, right? That's the best conversation you could give me. That's the best conversation you could give yourself. And now, as we talk about faith, as I said moments ago, there is a waiting period. And uh, I've got a special guest that I'm going to let come up here real quickly and uh, really pour into you guys because I really feel that this is necessary, what we're about to talk about right now. It's while waiting, the prophet Paul talked about two words. He talked about learning how to be a base versus learning how to be a bound. And I don't want to take it for granted that all of us understand what that means. So I brought someone on that I look up to, someone that is just literally one of my favorite people who I love to listen to. I truly mean that. And, man, I, I, I truly love to learn from this gentleman. Gentleman, he's very, very special to me and uh, someone that just really warms my heart with a wealth of knowledge. I want to bring on the phone here my younger brother, Mr. Rashawn Fulcher, the fire captain here out of Sacramento, and he's going to really pour into uh, talking about what it means and talking about a base versus a bound. Rashawn, did you did you make it on the call this day, or are you on the are you on the fire on the fire hydrant? I am here, man. I am here. I don't know if you can hear me, but I'm here. I can hear you loud and clear. The floor is yours. Man, that, I, I can't even call that an intro because you dropped so many powerful nuggets that it, 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 saying it as an intro would be an understatement. So I, I really hope folks have caught what you have led me into, but for the sake of time, I'll dive right in because you, you did me speak on Paul and understanding the life of Paul. As we talk about the context of what he's saying, we have to dive into who was this dude? Like, who was this dude? This was the same dude that had notches on his belt for killing Christians. Like, I didn't say persecution, but killing Christians. I mean, he was trying to kill the movement. Now this brother is one of the faces of the movement. And as he writes this in Philippians, I'm going to read the verse so we can all understand in the King James Version what he wrote. But as I read it, understand, this brother's sitting in a jail cell. So things have come full circle in his life. Paul is a very educated man. He was very prestigious in what he was doing. He was very well known, and he was feared and respected for killing Christians. Now he sits in jail because he's trying to promote and save people and build churches. So as I read the scripture, understand he's come full circle. But I'm starting off Philippians 4, verse 10. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me has flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Now, here we go. We're diving in. Now that I speak in respect, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned. Now, just, just mark that down because that's a key thing based on what you're talking about, Mosh. He didn't say he woke up and got it. He didn't say all of a sudden when Jesus touched me and put me on my path, I was complete. He said, for I have learned. That learned thing means, like you said, what your cousin told you, I'm waiting on you. I'm learning. I'm in a state of expected learning. So Paul says, for I have learned in whatever state I am, therewith to be content. I know how both to be abased and I know how to, to abound. Everywhere and in all things I'm instructed, instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengthen me. So speaking on the word abound and abase, understand again, and I keep repeating this for the context of understanding who is saying this. It's the difference between somebody speaking on a street corner saying, hey, invest in this, and Bill Gates saying it, or Warren Buffett saying it. The person makes the sentence much different. So understand, Paul sits in a prison cell, coming
coming full circle and says, here's what I've learned to be abound and to be abased. Now, when I did a word study, because the New Testament is written in Greek, you have to understand, most of us think of the word abound and abase in a material sense. Like I've accumulated things and I've learned to live without things. But if you do a word study in Greek on the two words, you will understand Paul was not just talking about a condition of material things. He was talking about conditions of the heart. Now, I'm going to let that sink for a minute. He was talking about conditions of the heart. He learned also in whatever season state he's in, whatever bars he's locked behind, whatever mountain he's on top of, he's also learned that the condition of his heart is relatable. Because he says there, in all things, I have learned that I can be depressed, I've learned that I can be happy, I've learned that I can be joyful, I've learned that I can be sad, I've learned in whatever situation I'm in, because of Christ, that I can also be content. And again, this is a brother who's come full circle sitting in a... What I want you to understand is whatever situation you may be in, temporary, permanently, or headed to, it's not the same jail cell Paul was writing from. But it is a situation in which you may feel abased. You may feel downtrodden, strung out. You may feel beaten down, bruised. You may feel like, why am I holding on to keep going? Why? But if you also notice in there, Paul said, and in every state, I've learned to be hungry and I've learned to be satisfied. And that's what he's talking about when he says, I've learned to be abound and I've also learned to be abased at the same time. It's talking about his humility. And if you go further into the verse to understand why he's writing and saying what he's saying, he says because one of the things that happens for those in faith is suffering is a sign that I'm on the right track. Now let me say that again. Because sometimes we think when we do the right things, we should feel the right way instantaneously. But like you said, Moss, there's things and times we have to wait on the thing. I'll make it like this. You might pick out your favorite recipe. Just because you accumulate the ingredients doesn't mean you instantaneously get to enjoy that dish. You got to put in work, and then you got to wait. And so what Paul is saying to the people here of Philippi, he's saying that faith comes with the gift of suffering. And this is what abound and abase means. He's talking about the gifting that comes with faith. So as you talk about the faith series and the faith walk, a lot of times we don't understand on the way to where we're going, we're going to bruise our feet. We're going to bump our head. And that is a testament of our faith because one of, the, one of the gifts of faith is the suffering that comes along with it. And that is exactly what Paul is talking about when he says, I've learned through suffering to be abound and to be abased. And so, Maz, I think it is very important that everybody understands wherever you are, whatever you're dealing with, you have to understand that season is teaching you something because a gift of faith is suffering. So as you go through your seasons, high, low, wherever they may be, part of that is to teach you, like Paul said, I have learned to be this way. And learning is a continual process. And so you might be in the season where you're learning to accept being abound. Thank God for that. You might, somebody else might be in the season where they're learning to be abased. Thank God for that. Because it says, in all things give thanks. And this is what Paul is talking about, again, as he's locked in a jail cell, coming full circle. He's able to say, I've learned to be abound and to be abased. But in all things, I give thanks. And so in my closing, I hope that folks understand that where you are is not permanent, and where you're going is also not temporary. And so as you travel, the only constant is, what is my takeaway? 
What am I learning? What is growing my soul? What is strengthening my resolve? Because that's what Paul is talking about in the jail cell, that I've learned to sit here in my condition of hunger and be full, and I've learned to can sit here in my condition of being full and yet still be hungry. Woo! And if, I hope y'all can get that. I hope y'all can get that. Paul is saying he has learned in whatever state he's in to appreciate the opposite of where he's at. Oh, I'm getting tired of it. So, so understand this. He's saying when I'm rich, I know how to appreciate being broke. And when I'm broke, I know how to appreciate being rich. I've never forgot the condition of the other because one leads me or drives me to the other one. Oh, From a jail cell. That's real good. That's, From a that's jail real good. Your, I, I, That's real good. I mean, you understand that? Sometimes we get full and forget what it's like to be hungry. But when we are hungry, we know what we want to do to be full. But it's the opposite he's talking about. When I'm locked up, because if you, under, if you, if you read the beginning, Paul is in jail hoping to get out, but realizing he may die. I'm, I'm going to say that again. Paul is in jail hoping he's going to get out. So let's take this to your condition. You might be broke, hoping to be rich, but you also sit there knowing that this may not change. None of this may change. That's Paul. I'm hoping to be set free, but yet I know they may convict me and kill me. So I may die in my condition. I may die in my state. But where is his heart at? Where is his mind at? His mind is not locked on death. His mind says, I've learned to be full and appreciate hunger. I've learned to be hungry and appreciate satisfaction. And so as you go through, Paul is clearly saying here, don't get locked in on what it looked like. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. That's Hebrews 11 and 1. And so if you understand what Paul is talking about, he says faith, one of the gifts of faith is suffering. And so as he sits there, he's saying, it may look like X, but my faith tells me it's Y. But what he's trying to connect with the people is, I understand between X and Y is some space. And that space is your head condition, your heart condition. Because you're seeing Y from the position of X, and you may be doubtful. You may be afraid. You may be fretful, but Paul is saying the space in between X and Y is your faith, which changes what X looks like on your way to Y. That's a bound and a base. That's a bound and a base. Paul said, I can sit in the jail cell hoping to be free, knowing death might be my option, and tell you I'm yet full, but I'm yet hungry. So as I close... The question I would say from what I said is, as you sit in whatever condition you're in, is your focus why or is your focus on the space between where you are and where you're going? Because that space between where you are and where you're going is where your faith gets exercised. And if you focus on that space instead of the jail cell you're in or the mountain you happen to be on right now, you will always continue to move forward, as Paul said, because the key word in his scripture was, I have learned. I have learned. Mm. That space between X and Y is learning, your learning opportunity. Because the Bible says, faith without works is dead. So that space between the two places, where you are and where you want to go, that's your work. If you're not working it, then your faith is dead. So understand, the life of Paul came full circle from persecuting Christians to propping Christians up to promoting the religion he tried to snuff out and kill out to now he's in a jail cell talking about, I've learned how to see through these bars to my future, even though death may be present reality for me. I've learned how to yet be hungry but be full, but also be full and still be hungry. And see, that is the question, that is where God wants us to get. Meaning, if I gave you everything you asked for, would you still be hungry for me? 
would you still mm. have the Z? Mm. Would you still Woo! have the Z? So let, let me let me say it again, brother. Let me say it again. We often hear people talk about God's not gonna put more on you than you can bear, nor is God gonna give you so much that He becomes irrelevant to you. What God will do is He will press you, try you, test you, so that way when I bless you, I understand you know how to still be hungry for me. And see, that's the spiritual part that Paul was talking about. I know how to hunger for God when I'm in a bad state. I know how to hunger for God when I'm in a content state. And so that's the, that's the million-dollar question. If God gave you everything you asked for, would you still exhibit and display That's the Sean, question. Are you still there? Or did we lose you? Okay. No, I'm here, bro. That, that's the we question. Lost you for a no, no, no. That's 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 it right there for me, man. As far as that goes with Paul, I hope they got it. I hope they well, got thanks. it. Oh, I got it. it I, that was just for me. I really appreciate you coming on, Sean. Make sure you send me your cash app because I, I, I need I need to sow a seed into that. <laughs> I, I, I need to sow a seed into that. That was absolutely spectacular, right on time. And, ladies and gentlemen, listen, I've got uh, – I told you I got the big guns with me today, but I also got someone else that I want to bring on. This is another uh, best friend of mine, someone that is also like a brother to me. I have a tremendous amount of respect for this gentleman. And this gentleman right now, oh, he's going to tie in both what I just said and he's also going to tie in what my younger brother Rashawn just said. Because I got to tell you, over the last couple of years, what I've seen, this brother has gone from a base to a bound. And he can really relate. Uh, he can really relate to what we're talking about. Before I give him the floor, I want all of you that are listening to me now, and specifically those of you that are going to listen to this replay, I want you to know why I saved this message before you go into 2022. Because you're going to hear from a lot of people. You're going to make a lot of declarations. This is my year. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to get in shape. I'm going to make money. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And, and, and look, you're supposed to do that. You are supposed to set your goals in place and declare what it is you want and what it is you're going to conquer. But, I said but, but what if your waiting time on achieving that goal is longer than you thought? What are you going to do then? See, that's why I wanted to hit this topic, a base versus a bound. I, I, wanted, I really wanted to do this justice. So now look, for those of you that are listening to me saying, well, well I'm not really, I work a job and I'm not really trying to go to the next level. Listen, it, has no, it doesn't matter if it's about money, relationships, spirituality, whatever the next level in your life is. You see, a base and a bound applies to us all. And so this gentleman here that I'm going to bring up, guys, he's going to take us home. This is the final speaker here of today. You've got the, you got the remaining of the time here. My good friend, someone that every time he talks, he fires me up. I listen. I take notes. I love this young man from the bottom of my heart. Guys, I want to bring on to the call none other than the multimillionaire guy himself, Mr. Damon Crump. Damon, are you with us? Yes, sir. Mr. Fulcher, can you hear me okay? I can. The floor is yours, brother. Well, first of all, man, thank you for sharing the platform with us, man. And what can I say about Captain Rashawn Fulcher, man? Uh, this brother just full of wisdom. Uh, you know, thank you for blessing us the way that you have. Uh, but, Romancio, as I take the last, you know, the few minutes that we have to close this thing out, man, I want to honestly tell you, you hit on something that was amazing, um, you know, because I wanted to definitely tie in to what Rashawn was speaking on uh, in terms of the principles of you believing and, and what that looks like, you know, what Paul uh, was like in his situation of being a base and a bound. But one thing you said, you said, you know, yes, you're going to make your goals to lose weight, you're going to make your money goals, and you should do those things. But here's what I want to talk about and touch on. But what that looks like, what is the infrastructure for actually seeing the manifestation of that? Because what's going to separate, you know, us from being just talkers, 
uh, of, of being individuals who's once again, here goes another year and we're talking again. And we said this five years ago, we said this 10 years ago, and we never, ever see that difference. That's what I want to touch on tonight. I want to be able to bring it home to be able to say, hey, guys, let's make sure we're making a difference in what it is that we're doing. So we got some things that we're not just going to talk vaguely. We're going to give you some things that you can immediately begin to apply. That way now you can go into the year and then you can go throughout 2022 making sure that you're on course to accomplish what it is that you're believing for and what your faith is allowing you to you know, be able to believe and take to the next level. Number one, you have to go into 2022 with the momentum. Let me start with saying that right now. People make, most people make a deadly mistake. And here's what most people do. Here's, here's, here's a setup for failure for you going into a new year. You ready for this? Is actually you start doing what you say you was going to do in the new year. <laughs> most people don't realize this. You should go in to the year already with momentum. So if you plan on losing weight, you should be started already. It's perfect call, perfect time. It's the day after Christmas. You didn't eat all the food. You didn't eat all the turkey, all the pies, everything you're going to do. You should begin your journey now. You're supposed to go into the year with momentum. Whatever your money goals are, whatever it is that you're speaking for, you believe in for, whatever you're working on in terms of your business, tomorrow morning, Monday morning, when businesses open back up, you know, for the, for the few days they're going to be open this week before they close out for New Year's Eve and New Year's and going into the new year, you need to already be in motion. See, that's one thing that I found, guys. I found out that going into that new year, already running, already setting the pace, what that does is that catapults you and that puts you really ahead of 99% of the people. And you're actually floating through that year because you've already built the momentum. See, most people never, ever realize that, and they make the mistake. They always want to make the move, you know, when it's time to make the move. Well, no, guys, you should be making moves before it's time. You should be prepared. You should already be in place. You should already have that infrastructure laid out. So all it's about for you is executing. See, what I want to do as well is I want to give you some things to apply. Listen, I'm going to be honest with you all. i got to be honest. I'm not going to be as deep as Rashawn was because – he, you know, the wisdom that this young man has and, and, and trying to walk in his shoes is, is impossible. It can't be done. I'm going to give you some practical things, some practical things that you can apply and keep with your life, along with everything that Captain Rashawn Fulcher just talked to us about, everything in the intro that the California kid was doing for us, everything they gave us, right? I want you to take all of that but I want you to apply and put these few little ancillary items to that. Very simple, very simple for life. And, guys, you wouldn't believe when you begin to operate in this mode how simple and how easy things come to you. Number one, get ready. What you're going to do is you're going for your goals and everything that you're setting yourself for as you're believing uh, this year uh, for 2022. Number one, you're going to surround yourself with loved ones. But I want you to understand what loved ones mean. It doesn't mean just family, because there's a lot of us that have family that's not loved ones. I'm going to say that again. Loved ones are the actual ones that love you. <laughs> you with me now? See, don't, don't always think loved ones, oh, that's my brother, my sister. No, 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 no. That don't necessarily mean loved ones. Loved ones are those that love you. That friend, that neighbor, whoever it may be, that person that you know you get that good energy from, that person that, you know, man, I can talk to, I can talk to without judgment. Um, I can be honest. That person that's going to tell me when I'm wrong and we can have an honest conversation. We can clash. We can disagree. And then we can laugh, joke, and drink a Coke right after it. See, this is you've got to surround yourself with this. I'm telling you how you survive. I'm, I'm showing you how you win and how you defeat anything that may stand in front of you, any obstacles that you could be facing. So first things first, we are going to surround ourselves with loved ones, and loved ones does not mean just family. It means the ones that love us. Number two, it's got to be very, very important that you make it a point. You ready for this? For you to eat right. It's important, guys. I don't need to say it this day and time, none of these things. And see, these practical things are, are able to just tie right in to what you already believe in when you, you know, got your three scriptures that you memorized, that you're quoting and your affirmations and everything else that you're doing, you got to have this part, part in place. Guys, I'm, I found that, you know, even for me, when I was in my base 
state, right, for us to become a bound. These were the things that I was doing, and I'll never stop talking about it. See, I know people sometimes, they want this rhema revelation, and they want you to give you, pull something down from heaven. And be, oh, my goodness, that was an amazing quote, because a lot of us, we're into sensationalism. Oh, we love to be able to feel good, and we want to tingle, and oh, that sent shivers and chills down my spine. No, a lot of times, now I want was practice. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, boy. I don't, I, don't don't shake. I don't need you to shake me out. I'm, I don't need to fall out because I need to get the message. I don't need you to pass out. And who? Oh my goodness! And saying it and all that. No, what I need you doing is I need you getting the practicality of what it's going to take for you to win. I need you in the game. Mm-hmm. See, and these are the type mm-hmm. of things that you need and you gotta have for you to be able to survive and be able to win. Because remember that 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 space that you're in is a blessing. Because now there's nothing like you getting up in front of people and being able to talk. Because now when I listen to the California kid and I listen to Captain Fulcher, guys, I can listen proudly and take a note. You know why? Because these are people that I know they've been through it. See, there's nothing like you being through it and you being a tried soldier and people know it. So that way they understand now. Oh wow. Man, this guy's coming from a place of experience, and he's saying what he's done. Oh, wow, he's not giving us no, no calculus formula for us to succeed. He's giving us something that we need that's very practical. Wow, I can do. Because what most people want to be, oh, and I don't, I don't have the money California kid has, and I, don't, I, don't, I can't speak as, as well, as a, and I'm not as successful as Captain Fulton. No, 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 no. I'm giving you practical things where it doesn't matter how much money, your bank account will be in the negative. All these things apply universally for anybody that want to win. Number three, you ready for this? Exercise. Got to do it. You got to do it, guys. Yes, 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 you got to get up. Oh, I can't run. My knees are bad. You need to be walking. You need to be walking. You need to be stretching. You need to be, because now what you're doing is, guys, I find that what this does, this this helps clear your mind. It helps uh, put you more in tune. It gets you more focused. It gives you more energy. I found there are days when if, if I don't exercise, I'll be more slothful and sluggish and, and want to take a nap and all these different things for when I get out there and get my run in the morning. Man, I look, stay, look like I can stay up all night. So in other words, these type of things is what you're going to need to tie into your goal. But watch this. you got to go into the year running with this. You know, well, DeMond, you, you got to realize, oh, I was going to, I got my gym membership already, and I was starting on Monday. Oh, my goodness, as soon as Monday get here, that was going to be my first day going to the gym. No, guys, you need to go tomorrow. You need to go tomorrow. Not, 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 not Monday, to, I'm talking about not Monday after the first of the year. No, you need to go tomorrow. Go into the year with the momentum that's needed. You ready for this? And you want to practice the art of application. Guys, you want to learn to be able to apply. You want to learn to be able to apply the things that you learn. You, you want to apply these things to your life. So when a lot of these things come into your space, when they come into your life, there's nothing like you learning about faith and speaking your faithful affirmations, but now be able to go with, to war with doubt and disbelief and things that may be coming up against you to challenge you and now to defeat it. See, we got to learn the actual, you ready for this? The art of application. See, applying is an art to me. You know why? Because everybody just can't do it, and then people can't do it well. It's an art to me. It's literally, literally a special person that literally knows how to apply, that knows how to go out there and get it done. A lot of times, myself and a California kid will be talking, and one of the main reasons, man, I truly respect this guy, Man, I love him. I love how he do what he do. I love seeing, hearing how he do what he do. You know why? Because he applies. He's going to get out there. He's going to figure it out. He's going to make it happen. He's going to deal with the law of large numbers. He won't be denied. He's not coming home without the lion's head. When he walk out that door, he's coming home. And that type of individual, you get a healthy respect for, guys. Because guess what I can say? Wow, this gentleman has mastered the art of application. Because what we love to do, man, we love to play the call back. And, oh, my goodness, I listened to the call 20 times, and you got pages and pages full of notes, but none of you are are, are mastering the art of application, which we want you to do. That's the level we want to begin to get you to get involved in because that's truly where the success is at. See, one thing for me. Right? I, I, I need you to hear this. For me, you know, 
I have a, everybody, success, there is no one meaning to success. I'll never say, oh, this is the meaning that, that, that this means you're successful. No, different people got different revelations about it, different meanings. I've heard people say success is a constant moving target. You know, people have this, oh, man, when I get a million dollars, I'm successful. So people got different, you know, uh, you know, parameters that they believe success is, but here's mine. I truly believe a successful person, right, is an individual who can keep a successful mindset, a PMA, positive mental attitude, can continue to speak their affirmations no matter what situation they're in, no matter how bad it is. Oh, you know what I'm saying? The light, you know, the light bill is not being paid, and, and, and I'm facing foreclosure, but you still can keep that same energy. That same energy, you're successful to me. See, because the manifestation of the things that we actually see, the money, the cars, the houses, the watches, the toys, the vacations, everything, that's nothing more than a byproduct of a successful mindset. That was somebody who was able to at, at overcome any type of adversity that was in their way, and they conquered it. That's the same principle you got to apply for you to be successful in your life in terms of your goals, in terms of faith, in terms of things that you're believing for. You got to apply, man. You got you to gotta, you gotta let the rubber meet the road. You got to let it hurt. You know, you know, everybody want to be heavyweight champ of the world, but nobody wants to get in that ring and take a punch. You got to get in there. You got to fight for what it is that you believe in. And for 2022, we don't want another year, man. We don't want you coming back. And then 2022 has gone past us, has gone past us, guys. And now here you go again. Here you go again. I'm, I'm going to show you how fast life moving. Do you guys realize everything start really, really getting hot and heavy? with this COVID and everything about February or March of 2020. Do you guys realize it's going to be almost two years? Two years have passed. I want you to think about this. I'm showing you how time moves. I'm showing you how things happen. So two years have passed. Where are you? What is the difference? Are we getting older now? Are you going to now go into another year? the same way you left the other one. And it's going to be the same thing over and over and over, and another year has ended, and you're still in the exact same place because you refuse to master the art of application. Guys, you got to listen. These men got on this call tonight. They blessed us uh, with principles. They, 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 they blessed us with food for thought. But the thing that I want you to understand more than anything is, man, I'm going to take this information and I'm going to apply. I'm going to actually move on what it is that I'm hearing and the people that I know that I'm surrounded with that are successful, all of them are applicators. Every last one of them apply principles. They apply the things that they learn that they teach to, to make sure that they're growing and headed in the right direction. I'll leave you with this before I pass it back to our illustrious host to close it out, guys, because I wanted to leave a few moments uh, for this gentleman to close his call out respectfully because it is his last one of 2022. And it's going to be a major one because this is going to be a massive, massive year for him and his family. But I do want to tell you this. For 2022, that's all I'm pleading with you with and I'm asking of everybody under the sound of my voice. I want you to enter a learner but I want you to leave a leader, okay? Make that your goal for 20. Put that on your list for us, 2022. Enter a learner, leave a leader. Man, I'm going to go into this year humble. I'm going to go into this year learning and, and, and learning from those that I look at to, to be heading in the direction that I'm going in. But one thing I'm also committing to myself, I will not leave 2022 the same way I've done in previous years before. Man, I'm taking things to the next level, and I promise you, I'm leaving the leader. Brother Ramasio Fulcher, man, thank you for sharing a few moments with me, allowing me to share on your platform on tonight, brother. As always, it's a blessing uh, uh, being under the sound of your voice, and anything that uh, we can ever do for you, brother, say the word and let me know. Back to you, sir. Man, thank you so much for coming on and giving us practical nuggets. I mean, I mean like I said, very simple very practical, but very purposeful. Oh, that was really good. I got my notes, guys. I know I took down 
my six points. I hope you did as well. And uh, like we said at the beginning, guys, we don't we we don't ask you for money. We're not gonna like I said, we're not gonna call you next week and try and recruit you into another business. No, 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 no. This is absolutely free. This is free. Can you believe it? Free knowledge, free nuggets from tried, from proven people. Absolutely free. And can you believe we've been doing this for five and a half years? But the gentleman you just heard, Mr. Demon Crump, he's got a call. He does every Friday. I think he's been doing it for like ten, almost fifteen years consistently for free. See, what I'm trying to pour into you is a couple things. If you have an entrepreneurial bone in your body at all, I'm talking about at all, just, just, I'm scared, but I want to, but I don't know, but God, if this is really you, can you come through the phone or send a sign or let me know that, you know, I'm in a, absolutely free right here, right? We're, we're doing this for free. Now, why am I keep emphatically point, pointing that out? The reason why, guys, I want you to understand that one of the principles of you ascending to the next level in your life, it has to do with the art of applying, what he just talked about. It has to do with you have to apply what God has given you. All this sensationalism and I'm going to pray. Yeah, prayer is extremely important. I encourage more of it. But prayer without doing anything, it doesn't work. It doesn't manifest nothing. Because you can't grow just from sitting there praying without doing. So you got to take action. And so this call is designed for all of you, absolutely free, to come, learn, and apply. But we ask you one thing. The only one thing I ask you for being here, getting all this for free, is subscribe to our philosophy. In other words, what you make happen for others, God will make it happen for you. So in other words, you came and, and learned and and, and sat at the table and, and got fed today, right? But what, what I'm saying is I don't want you to be me. I don't want you to be Rashawn. I don't expect you to be Demond. There's something in you, you know? There's something in you. For example, I, I've got a cracked windshield. My, my, my left rear, uh, uh, wind, uh, 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 my left, my left uh, uh, driver's side uh, windshield is cracked. It needs to be fixed. I got to go to a man that knows how to fix windshields, right? Maybe that's you. You know, here, here it is. I, I'm, 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 I'm literally in the birthing season of some big things that I'm working on. Well, guess what? I go sit with people that have more wisdom than me, right? So what I'm saying to you is we all need each other in some capacity. That's why we, we're doing this call absolutely free, basically saying step your game up. And he just gave you some practical steps, very practical, because the best part of what he said to me is I just don't want to go another year and feel like I look back and I saw no progress in my life. I saw no progress in my life. That can't happen. That can't happen. So, guys, listen, I know you're going to hear from a lot of people. You're going to hear a lot of things. You know, you're going to have some fun going into the new year, all this stuff. I really wanted you to understand the difference between what it means to be a base versus a bound. And as DeMond talked about, he gave you practical steps, practical steps that you can do that will begin to actually take you where you want to be, for sure. And coming back to a base and a bound, no matter where you find yourself, what did DeMond tell you? His definition of success is can you keep the same energy, whether you got a whole bunch or you got nothing at all? <laughs> that's strong. That's strong. See, let me tell you why that's so strong, because that means you are passing the test. And when you pass the test, you finally get promoted. Come on, somebody. When you pass the test, that's when you get promoted. And I don't care how cool you are, how influential you are, how connected you are, who your mother was, who your father was, none of that matters to me. You have to go through a test. Yes, you. Oh, why, why do I got to deal with all these people? Why won't they just follow and do what I say? And why is it so difficult? And why do I have to be so patient? And why, why, why? You're being tested. The very thing you've been praying for, the very thing that you said you want, well, guess what? You're going through the fire right now. 
And so making sure you keep the same energy or the same hunger, despite whether you are abound or abase, rich or poor, is very important. And these practical steps, I mean, he, could, he gave them to you really simple. These are, these are ridiculously simple, ridiculously simple for all of you to do. What I want from each of you is do me a favor. Just do me one favor. We're going to record, we're going to uh, upload this call here in about 30, 45 minutes or so to the YouTube channel, to the Facebook channel. And if you could do me a favor, take this call and send it to two, three people you know. Absolutely free. Absolutely free. Just, hey, listen, I want to give you a free gift. And just send it to them. You got to hear this. You got to listen to this. It's, I promise you this. There's nobody talking about a base versus a bound right now. I promise you that. Everybody's talking about make your declarations, do this. And look, they're all adding value. Yes, they are. But there's a reason why God spoke to me and said, look, I want you to teach on this, a base versus a bound. And I think we did an outstanding job here today. So listen, guys, as we cross over into 2022, know this. I've said this before, so don't expect anything different now. Number one, I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. No, there's not, absolutely nothing. Well, what do you mean? I got on this call, girl. He told me he loved That's right. I said I love you. That's right. And there's nothing you can do about it, number one. Number two, I want you to remember. I want you to always remember, no matter who you are, no matter where you are, no matter how good it may be, no matter how bad it is, always remember this. God did not make any mistakes when he created you. I know it may not – I know you may not understand why you're waiting so long. Why, 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 why? I know you may not understand. But remember this. In all that you do, there's nobody in the entire world any greater than you. And the moment you come to realize that and recognize that, we are standing right here with our wallets, and we cannot wait to pay for the value that you bring into the world. Let me say that again. I said, and always remember, in all that you do, there's nobody in the entire world any greater than you. And the moment you recognize that, you, the moment you recognize it, we are standing here in line with our wallets in our hands, and we cannot wait to pay you for the value that you bring into the world. Hey, listen, I'm the California kid doing what I do. I love each and every single one of you guys, and I'll see you, Lord willing, in 2022. Hey, thank you, Demond Crump. Thank you, Rashawn Fulcher, for chiming in. I appreciate you guys. Goodbye, everybody.